Welcome back to the channel. So in this episode, we're going to start the 8.8 build. I'm going to narrow it, put 9-inch ends on it, put a full brace kit, and put adjustable lower control arm mounts on it. So let's see what we got to do to get started. All right, so kind of show you where I'm at and how I got there. So we'll kind of go over how I came up with how much I'm narrowing the rear end. So I got the rear end out of the car. I got both tires and rims, tires aired up under the car, sitting exactly where I wanted them. So I hung plumb bobs and all that to make sure they were square. So once I got all that, I measured in between the inside of the rims from wheel mounting surface basically to wheel mounting surface. And I got that measurement. So what that gives me is the entire length that my rear end with axles, brakes, and all that on it need to be. Well, I'm using 95 Mustang GT rear brakes. Uh, later on, I'll probably get some, some TBMs or some aerospace or something like that. But right now, to save a little bit of money, I'm using those. So with that big number that I measured from rim to rim, the axle offset for the brakes is two and a half inches. So that's two and a half inches each side. Plus, the rotors are about a quarter inch thick. So I had to add those. So I took two and a half inches times two is five. And then I took a quarter of an inch times two is a half inch. So I had to take five and a half inches off that measurement, which gives me the measurement that I need from flange to flange, the housing to be. So that measurement for me was two and three quarters of an inch is what I need to narrow it. So what I did was measured out from the axle flange out, I measured out two and three quarters of an inch. I made a mark. I then, because if you see, I'm using the strange H1, H1138 big bearing ends that retain the 8.8 bolt pattern. So with these, what I had to do next was measure how thick the bearing end was. From there, I went to where I made that mark at two and three quarters of an inch, and I came over and I scribed all the way around, which gives me where I need to cut this axle tube so I can weld this on and it'll be exactly two and three quarters of an inch narrowed. So other things, as you can see, the control arm brackets, I cut those off and I've ground them down. So I've got these adjustable Team Z brackets going on it. It's got four holes of adjustment. Before I cut them off, I put a angle gauge on the back of the housing here. And I think at that time I had it, at, you know, it was telling me 20 degrees. I put it on the back of the stock brackets and they were at 15 degrees. So I know now I need to put these, no matter what this is or how I have it set up, these need to be five degrees minus what the housing is. So that gives me that. What I also did at this point, as you can see on the end over here, I have the strange big bearing H1138 nine inch ends. So I've got bolts in them. So they are attached right now to these stock housing ends to make sure that my brakes are going to sit where they should. I took an angle gauge, put it on the top of this, found out the degrees from on that. And then I put it on the H1138 strange bearings. And I found out what the degrees are for that. So when I cut these ends off, I know now that there is, and I have to do the math again, there's like a 37 degree difference. So I'll just put it back on here, whatever that is, I'll make sure that those bearing ends, when I weld them on, are at that 37 degrees or whatever it was. So with everything set up now, what I have to do is I'm going to use this DeWalt saw to try to cut the ends off. So I've got the, the housing as best as I can. I've got it ratchet strapped down right here, so hopefully it doesn't move. But now I'm gonna to have to, and I gotta make sure this thing's perfectly level and then the saw's level so it doesn't cut the ends at an angle. So I'm gonna to try to set this thing up where I can just come down and on these scribe marks and see how good it is. I may cut it just a hair short uh, to see. Hopefully the blade doesn't wobble too much, but use that to cut the ends off. It'll take me a minute to set this up, uh, measure from both sides to make sure it is cutting straight down. So that's what I'm gonna do and then I'll see you after that.
so I've got the ends chopped off. That, uh, that saw had some wobble to it, so I'm gonna have to clean up the ends just a little bit, but uh, they're decently straight. I'm gonna set the, the ends on. I've got the jig in the center, and I'll, I'll show you guys the inside of this so you can see the jig. And then uh, I'm gonna put the, the ends on and kind of see where they made up. So the jig that I bought, so I bought the, you guys, I think it was about four or five whatever videos ago, I showed this, but it's a company called leadmineproducts.com. I bought, it comes with two outer, basically bearing ends, uh, and then it has two inner ones. And this is only for an 8.8, putting a uh, big bearing nine inch ends on an 8.8. So I think I've got maybe, for these it was like a, a hundred bucks or something. I'll put a link in the description for this product. And then I had to buy the inch and a quarter bar. Uh, I can't remember where I got it, but I think I paid like 70 bucks for the bar. So all said and done, I got about 170 bucks in this narrowing jig, which ain't bad. It, uh, it costs a lot more, I think, giving the, the rear end to somebody else and then having them do it. But anyways, I'll show you the inside and then we'll put the, uh, the bearing ends on. So you can see the, the inner bearings, they go on these main caps. I've got the, the, the caps torqued down, I think it's about 80, 80 foot pounds, whatever it calls for. And then the bar goes right through the center. Actually pretty nice and they fit very well. So now we've got the, we just got to test fit the outer bearing in so you got this outer bearing in and then you have the actual nine inch in itself so it locks on like that and then slides smooth and it's actually I don't really have that much cleaning up to do so you got that and then you have this basically keeper keeps it from moving around and keeps it from actually going this way so you can weld it on but it's got a little allen head in the center you put that on tighten it down to wherever you need it and then it'll stay there so you can weld i've got some more cleaning up to do right here so i can actually weld i may uh tig weld these and i'll maybe do a like a speed it up so you can kind of see it but this is what i got to do i got to put these on on both sides make sure there's not really any gap, which this side is actually pretty good. I've got a tiny bit of cleaning up to do and then measure to make sure both ends were the exact same. So that's what I'm going to do and then uh, I'll show you from there. All right, so I got the ends all cleaned up. Uh, I've got, uh, I put acetone on to really clean them and I clean the inside. And it's sitting exactly like I said earlier. So if you guys remember I put this on, I think it was at four degrees and then this uh, the difference was like I think 37 so I've got this sitting exactly where it should based off those degree things I got earlier so now I'm gonna get it tacked in place and then verify and then I'll completely weld it around So I welded the other side on and now I've got this side to do. So I've got it set up and the good thing is I, I had to, as I was welding, I had to keep turning the rear end around to, for me to get a good uh, spot so I could weld. So I've got the rear end set back up on this side ready to weld. So what I did was use my angle gauge and I put it on that side of the rear end on both sides because I set that one up, uh, I say perfectly. Pretty damn good so now all i really have to do to line these up is get this one uh, on both sides of this to equal what that one is and it is so 
One thing you'll notice if you guys are doing this with these 8.8 tubes is they're not really perfectly straight from the factory. On this side, that side was pretty good. This side, uh, there's a little bit more room on this bearing inside on one side more than the other, but that's the reason you put it in a jig because if you try to set these things up without a jig and make it perfect all the way around, there's a potential where it's going to be crooked. So I've got it all cleaned up, used acetone, so now I'm going to get it welded in. So I've got the last side uh, tigged on. I'm just letting it cool down. I'm keeping it in the jig so it cools. I mean, I could pull it out, but I'll just let it cool down from there. So I'm going to break this video into two parts. So you've got the whole how I narrowed it, the measurements I came up with and all that. I think it'll be too long if I try to add everything into it. So obviously the first part is narrowing it, and I'll go ahead and show you what I got in store for part two. So for part two of the build, we got the full Team Z brace kit and the adjustable lower control arms. So all this will go on on part two and I'll show you exactly how I'm setting everything up, the measurements I'm getting and uh, what I'm doing. So stay tuned. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video of narrowing the 8.8 and coming up with all the measurements and everything. So on a side note, I bought this about a week ago, this Lincoln uh, Electric 3350 series welding helmet. Now, I'm not sponsored by Lincoln or anything else. I bought this, bought it off Amazon. I think they're like 250 bucks. I'll put a link uh, in the description, and I'll put a link to everything I used in this video in the description. So, best welding helmet I have ever used. My buddy let me use his the other day uh, at his house, and as soon as I left, I had to buy one. So, if you're looking at getting a new welding helmet, this one is phenomenal. And as always, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for part two of the 8-8 build. Thanks again.